Hello and welcome to our third nonfiction book all about worms. I hope that you are really enjoying learning about worms this week. I know I am more enjoying learning more about worms. Um, today the book is called Inside the Worms Hole and it's written by Mesh Goldish. And you may notice that there's some information you've learned before, but sometimes with nonfiction it helps to reread and relearn information so it becomes a more a part of our thinking. And I'm guessing by the title inside a worm's the worm's hole that we might be talking about the habitat that worms live in today. All right, let's get started. What's in that hole? Think about the holes that you've dug and what you find inside of them. You may just find some earthworms. It's a cool summer night in a vegetable garden. Suddenly, an earthworm wriggles out of the dirt through a tiny hole in the ground. With its tail end still in the soil, the worm searches for food nearby. Before sunrise, the wiggly creature will return to its underground home. Why do you think a worm returns to its hole before the sun appears? So from what we've learned before, you might have some ideas about this. You can see there is an earthworm. They have soft bodies, no arms and legs, and if you remember from yesterday, they're also invertebrates. Moist homes. Earthworms spend most of their lives in a cool, damp soil. They stay underground during the day to keep away from the hot sun. If their skin dries out, they will die. At night, however, it's cool enough for the worms to leave their hidden homes. And here you can see a map of the world and all the yellow places are where you would find earthworms. So you can see you would find them where we live too. Earthworms range in length from only one inch to more than eight feet. And I think that we heard before that they could, they could grow up to 11 feet. Moving forward, oh, look at this. Here's an illustration that should look familiar, a close-up picture of an earthworm's body with a setae, the segmented parts of its body. As a worm moves through the ground, it makes tunnels. Although the worm's body is soft, it can still push itself through the soil. The worm crawls by first stretching out the front part of its body. Then it pulls its talon forward. Tiny hairs on the worm's skin called setae grab the dirt to help the worm move forward. And here you can even see a worm moving through a tunnel, a nice cross section. Some earthworms live close to the top of the ground. Others, such as night crawlers, dig tunnels more than six feet deep. I think we have heard that before, so you can dig as far as six down, six feet down, and you'll still see earthworms. Breaking up the soil. So this sounds familiar too. How do earthworms break up the soil and how does that help us? As a worm crawls underground, its long body breaks up the soil. Its body also makes tiny holes in the dirt. Air and rainwater travel through these holes to reach the roots of plants. The roots take in the air and water that plants need to grow. And you can see a young plant there. It looks like it might be a pea plant. All right, so you can see in this illustration the plant roots and the worms down below breaking up the soil for those plant roots. If an, earthwork if an earthworm finds a small rock blocking its path underground, it pushes it aside. A worm can move a rock that is up to 50 times its own weight. So earthworms are strong. There's another adjective to describe them. A worm finds food as it moves through the dirt. It eats soil and tiny pieces of dead plants. The food the earthworm eats passes through its body. When the food comes out of the worm's tail, end as droppings or castings. So there's a worm eating part of a pumpkin, and a worm eats leaves, seeds, fruits, vegetables, and roots. And I'm wondering if you remember this. You can see the worm castings over there. That's their poop, basically, right? 
How do you think the worm's castings help plants grow? Do you remember from what we read yesterday and the day before? All right, let's find out what they say here. Worm droppings. A worm's castings are filled with nutrients. The nutrients come from different plant parts that the worm ate. Castings make soil rich and healthy. They help the plants that live around the worm's hole grow bigger and taller. So you can see grasses growing in the worm castings left there, and they look a lot like dirt. I wonder if you'd be able to find them if you look very closely outside. After eating at night, a worm uses its castings to cover the entrance to its home. The castings hide the worm's hole. So why do you think that worms want to hide the whole entrance to their home? Think about that. Yeah, do you remember all those animals that eat worms? Danger above and below. All right. Many different animals such as toads, snakes, and skunks feed on worms. A hungry bird will try to tug a worm out of its hole to eat it. However, pulling the slender creature out of the ground isn't so easy. A worm uses its setae to hold itself firmly in place. Remember, they have those bristles too on their bodies. There's a, bar, a bird tugging at a worm and that worm does not want to leave its hole. And here's another mole. Animals that live underground, such as moles, also hunt worms for food. Ooh, it looks like they're going to talk a little bit about their life cycle. In the spring, earthworms find mates so they can have babies. After mating, each worm forms a cocoon around its body. It lays up to six eggs, slip out of the worm's body and into the cocoon. Later, the entire cocoon falls off the worm's body. And that's what the cocoons look like. So each of those cocoons have up to six new worms ready to grow. Unlike other animals, and you might remember this from the first book on Monday, every worm is both male and female. After two earthworms mate, each one lays eggs and has babies. So all earthworms can have babies. Room to grow. After about three weeks, the eggs inside hatch. Oops, the eggs inside a cocoon hatch. Each baby is less than one inch long and looks like a piece of thread. Although tiny, the babies can dig their own holes without their parents' help. It can take up to one year before worms are fully grown. All the while, they'll be wiggling their way through the soil. And right here, the little illustration shows you a baby hatching from the cocoon and then an adult earthworm is above it and it says some types of worms can live up to 20 years and that is more information about the life cycle of a worm so you can go ahead and find this book on epic and be a worm scientist right go out and watch some worms and and observe their behaviors and what they're doing in the soil. Also, here are some more vocabulary, ones that we are fairly familiar with. And this book does not have an index, but a lot of nonfiction books do have indexes. And if you wanna learn more about other animals, right? Insects and arachnids and all sorts of animals, you can spend some time on Epic and choose some books for yourself. I hope you all have a wonderful day.